So in this section, we'll be learning about a few clustering algorithms. Let's start with uh, k-means clustering. Uh, and it's a, a very popular and well-known clustering algorithm. And uh, the idea is quite simple as well as it has like some constraints. So let's talk a little bit about some of the in, uh, intuitive idea behind this uh, clustering algorithm and then we will move to the details. So uh, these, this particular algorithm works only one uh, numeric data and um, we have to actually provide that how many clusters we want our data to be. So we have to uh, uh, give an explicit k being the number that how many clusters we want and um, as this name suggests this actually works by grouping uh, data points uh, based on some mean estimates so let's assume that we are given these five data points and i'm denoting those data points and x i y y for this particular case we can quickly connect that each of the data points has two values x and y and those two values are actually numeric values and that's why we are plotting these on a cartesian coordinate uh, plane two dimensional data points each with uh, numeric values you know and we note as x i y i is the data point <coughs> so as i mentioned uh, let's say we want uh, two clusters to grow or uh, explain the data um, so as long as we provide uh, k um, value uh, is 2 uh, then either explicitly or implicitly the algorithm randomly starts with two initial means and here we are showing those mean values as the red data point and the green data point but uh, make, sh uh, make sure we understand and we are clear that these are actually not data points these are just the initial seeds that's what we, we call so for k equal to 2 we'll have uh, two initial seeds uh, that we represented represent as mx and yx and each seeds we index with j you know so j being 1 to k so j when j equal to 1 this is one mean uh, and then j equal to 2 is another mean okay so the first thing we will do we will actually compare all the data points against those means you know or those seeds so here we are comparing all five data points with the seed that is represented through the red uh, point here or data point here we'll do the same for the green seed and then we will try to find which data point is actually closer to which mean you know and this is how our data might look like these three given points were closer to uh, this seed and these two data points were closer to this seed okay so at this point of time we actually were able to find out that which of the points are closer to which seed you know so once we reach that point then we update its means okay so here this was our initial seed but because we found that these are the three data points that are closer to this seed so we used the values of these three seeds to estimate the new mean you know so the mean actually moved from here to here likewise the green seed actually moved from here to here you know so this is how the the model is actually updating its corresponding seed mean okay so this is how things are represented here so i have a new mean that is actually the summation of all the x i values that were closer to the initial seed and then i update the mean axis you know so here now if you recall that uh, this is one of the seed and we are actually estimating the new mean value per axis you know so this is the mean update for axis xi and this is the mean update for axis yi and here we are just uh, representing that how the red seed moved to its new location and how the green seed moved to its uh, new location by using this formula okay and uh, this is the seed uh, status after the first iteration and we follow uh, the, the same procedure so we iterate so again the idea will be that now we compare which data points are actually closer to this uh, new updated mean and redo the estimates of the means you know that's the that's an iterative process you know 
Yeah, okay, so how, how long we actually iterate, you know? So the iteration will finish um, if the means doesn't move at all, you know. So at some point you will have that these means actually doesn't move, you know, they remain at the same uh, location. That means that, uh, there are no uh, level changes happening even we iterate uh, over times, you know. Uh, so we can think that is the end of the learning uh, process. And the other option might be that we just uh, run this uh, up, uh, mean updates iteration uh, for a predefined number of times, you know. And this, how, this is the likely configuration as an output that uh, these three data points were assigned the green cluster and then these two data points were assigned the red cluster, you know. Okay, uh, as you have learned that the, the k-means is actually uh, only for the numeric data. So the next uh, question would be that, okay, if what if we have a categorical data, you know, uh, because the k-means only works for numeric data, as you have learned, you know. So for k-modes, we, we, we can use the same algorithm, but uh, we have to do a little bit tweaking and usually people call it k modes uh, because in case of categorical data we don't have the concept of mean so we replace the uh, concept of mean with uh, corresponding modes so again here we are seeing the the content of our k means clustering algorithm run that we have just seen before and um, all the other steps will require the same only uh, we will have the idea of modes replacing the means you know so if you recall for this particular setup we had uh, we wanted to have two clusters so we provided two means for the k modes we will provide two initial modes as our seed of the corresponding clusters and here again we'll do the comparison against those modes and the data points and we will update the mode you know, uh, based on the the distance me distances uh, measured you know so um, for the numeric case or k-means we will use distances like euclidean distance or l1 distances and for the categorical data, you can just use the, the count, value counts, you know, as the distances, you know. And you can use other matrices as well as part that fits the, the categorical data format, okay. Uh, and you just update the, um, update your mode um, based on the most occurring values, most occurring values for a categorical values, you know. So for example, here we are looking at the Cartesian coordinate representation of numerical data, but uh, the categorical data might be that if you have a feature that's dog and cat, then for the for the first feature you can you count that how many um, how many were dogs and how many were cats and use the most occurring value as the the mode value okay next we'll be discussing that okay what if we have um, a mixed value your feature both has a categorical values and numeric values so uh, there are many approaches to solve this issue one might be that you convert all the features into one type you, you might convert the categorical features to numeric feature using uh, encodings like one hot encoding or maybe like other encodings or you can go the other way like for example you can convert the numeric data into categorical by just binning you know binning meaning that you just uh, group the numeric values for example if you have age as your numeric feature then you can group the ages between 0 to 10 10 to 20 whatever way you feel comfortable or maybe like your application actually guides you and then use those bins as a categorical data you know so again if you have mixed values then you have to convert all the features into one type either from all the numeric feature to be categorical or the categorical feature to be numeric and then use either k modes or k means algorithm and there is another way that you, we can try it, um, because if we recall um, the k means or k modes is an iterative algorithm so it estimates the similarity uh, between some initial seeds so there if you have mixed data type, you can use both the numeric distance and categorical dis uh, distances as your uh, distance metric but you, you have to be careful because we have to normalize the distances because we have to make sure that um, uh, this the dis one distance doesn't doesn't uh, affect the other you know so you have to normalize the data and then we can use 
the same algorithm to act as k-means or uh, k-modes you know so in summary we talked about um, k-means and k-modes but in fact uh, K mode is just the categorical version of uh, your K means algorithm. If you have mixed data, then we have to either work in the feature level that we convert all the features into one type, either into categorical or numeric, and then use either K mode or K means, or we can work at the algorithm level by keeping the features as they are but uh, playing a trick one is that how do we estimate uh, these means or modes and how do we do the um, comparison you know so how do we update the means or mode and how do we estimate the distances you know if you can utilize certain metric and certain approach that will um, take care of these two steps in a more normalized way then i think uh, we can still use the same algorithm to work on a data set when you have mixed uh, categorical and numeric data